of World War I, the people of Carmel and the surrounding areas had gathered together to celebrate the end of the war that was going to end all wars. They gathered down at the, the World War monument at Ocean and San Carlos. One could only imagine what the speeches must have been. They had felt that they had created a situation where the rest of the world forever could live in peace and the nations would never be going to war. They created a League of Nations as sort of a world government to keep this from ever happening. Refugees flooded this country. They saw a opportunity from a war-ravaged Europe, came here by the hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Many of us are living proof of that mass immigration. They came to a land of golden opportunity, and this country thrived like it had never thrived in its history. No one could have even imagined that this great experience would uh, develop into what it did. We went for over two decades, the longest period in time that the United States had not been within a war situation. We resisted it in Europe. We saw what was going on. But on that fateful day in 1941, on December 7th, we had no choice. We went back to war once again. But every time this year, the citizens of Carmel joined together at the monument, and after the monument, came here, sat on, the, on this grassy ground, had picnics and talked and shared their experiences. Disappointed that the war had broken out again, that their efforts seemed to, not to have uh, come to the way they wanted it to be, but they went back again, and once again we were victorious. Then came Korea, a very short time thereafter. Still, we gathered in this park. Then Vietnam and we continue to gather in this park. To this very day, we still gather in this park. That's a different type of war now. We look around, we saw it on, on September 11, 2001. It was right in our own backyards. We saw it just a few weeks ago in Boston. There are no boundaries anymore. There are no countries that we are at war with. We're at war with people that know, know no boundaries, know no political position other than that they just want to bring this country down. Well, we're not going to let that happen. We're here again. So I welcome you all to the Carmel Memorial Day ceremonies. Thank you for being here. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Mayor of Carmel-by-the-Sea, Jason Burnett. Jason. Today we mark the 145th anniversary of the first official observation of what we now call Memorial Day. It was established by General John Logan's Order No. 11 of the Grand Army dated May 1868. The order reads, the 30th day of May 1868 is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers and otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. Logan's order served to ratify a practice that was already widespread both in the North and the South in the years immediately following the Civil War. And in Carmel-by-the-Sea, this tradition began with the building of the World War I Memorial, or was, as was said, the Great War Memorial, built in 1919. The bells that rang to start today's ceremony are from that World War I Memorial. And here in Devendorf Park, we have memorials for those who served in World War II, for those who fought in the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and the Prisoners of War Memorial. First, I want to thank the Carmel Chapter of the American Legion Post 512 for hosting the ceremony. 
Our post was chartered 78 years ago, 1935. And thank you for all that you do to serve our community and serve our veterans. I also want to recognize, uh, yes. Thank you to the American Legion. I want to recognize a few people here. First of all, Cindy Lopez of our city staff for helping to put on this event. Uh, we have council member Steve Hilliard, uh, Victor council member Victoria Beach was supposed to be here, but her flight was delayed and she is driving in. I advised her, don't drive too fast, please, but she is hoping to, uh, to make it here. Uh, and I, I know that uh, Vice Mayor Ken Talmadge was intending to be here and I don't uh, uh, see him and our council member, Carrie Tice. On a personal note, I want to recognize my, my wife and our young son. And uh, as I think about Memorial Day, what is most important to me is recognizing the sacrifice that young men and women have made to be away from their families, uh, to put themselves at risk, to serve our country so that we can live in paradise. Could be a little bit warmer, uh, but that we can be here today, that we can have have walked a short distance or or driven but d driven but to be close at home to remember those uh, who came before us and those today who are not with their families uh, who do not have uh, the ability to uh, wake up with their loved ones and go to bed with their loved ones each and every night. Sacrifice, of course, is made by the men and women who go off to war, but it's also their families, their mothers, their fathers, their wives, their husbands, and their children who are making that sacrifice on behalf of all of us. Thank you to each and every one of you who served today, who, who, who served. Thank you to all the families who sacrificed for that service. And thank you to all the men and women who are not here today because today they are off in a foreign land serving our country. As you go about your business today and you see men and women in uniform, please stop and thank them. Today we rem remember that our freedom is not free. It was paid by the ultimate sacrifice of our fellow Americans, men and women who are willing to leave their families, to travel to foreign lands and to hostile and harsh conditions. As former Senator Dole said, they had the physical and moral courage causes Americans of every generation to lay down their own lives for people they will never meet. Today, we remember you, we thank you, and we honor you and your families. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have with us today a special guest who's not on the uh, program, and this is the District Commander of the American Legion, the 28th District of Area 2, Department of California, Rick Martin. Uh, he took time out of his busy schedule. As you can imagine, there's many different events that he's attending today around the peninsula. But he did stop in. He wants to uh, at least say hello and make a special presentation. Commander? Yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you that have come out here to to honor the veterans, our comrades that have fallen, and our present veterans. Uh, at this time, I'd like to also uh, welcome my wife, Connie Martin, 
and uh, my uh, mother-in-law, Maggie Rodriguez. Please stand up. Oh my God. Thank you. We're not only here to to honor our past comrades. We're also here to to honor our present military. If it wasn't for these people and their sacrifices, uh, we wouldn't be standing here. We'd be under some communist regime or, or this or that. So I would really like to thank all of the veterans, past and present, for their sacrifices. Now, speaking of present comrades, I'd also like to honor a veteran, part of our organization. This uh, man, he gives time after time after time, hours and upon hours of his dedication to the American Legion, to the veterans of the United States. At this time, I'd like to call up Mr. Paul Rodriguez, past Vice Commander, Department of California. <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez, for duty dedicated to country, in recognition and sincere appreciation of the outstanding duty, service, and assistance which contributed to the advancement of the American Legion programs, improvements, and activities dedicated to God and Country, Department of California, District 28, I'd like to present you this certificate of appreciation. Thank you, sir. In closing, thank you all for being present to our veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Martin. Uh, you've heard this before, but we here in Carmel of Post 512, Carmel by the Sea, consider ourselves a family. Family is made up of three components. That is the legionnaires, the veterans of the, of the post. We also have an auxiliary, which are our lady component. And without our ladies, we wouldn't be much of anything. We all realize and acknowledge that. And we also have our Sons of the American Legion. At this time, I would like to introduce our junior past commander of Post 512 Carmel, John Tompkinson. John. Good morning. Remembering can be a very powerful thing when we do so with sincerity. To actively honor this sacred day as we congregate together is a measure of a great society. So I welcome you here to this beautiful morning in the name of the American Legion Post 512 Carmel and the countless American men and women whose service and sacrifice allows us to observe Memorial Day. It has been said that the last words of soldiers facing death is please take care of my family. That is the mission and the eternal promise of the American Legion family. We carry that torch and have for a long time. Remember uh, that Post 512 in Carmel, been here an awful long time. We have numerous programs. We are constantly also at your service. Any veteran, any family of a veteran, please call us. We're always there to help you. And I say that message every year I stand up here. And I do. we do get calls of that nature. Also, American Legion Post 512 Carmel is your pipeline to help the many countless programs that the American Legion uh, and the American Legion family conducts to help veterans and their families. If you wonder how to become a part of that, please just call the post, get a hold of one of us, and we'll educate you and, uh, and, and help you to be more active, you know, in serving our veterans. Many veteran service uh, organizations on the Central Coast have been working for 20 plus years to form and see the creation of a Central Coast Veterans Cemetery. You've all been reading about it, uh, and now 
as it turns out, is the time for that to come to fruition. We need you and all the people that you can talk to. Every American on the Central Coast needs to be actively involved right now to make this a reality. We can no longer have our families having to drive two hours to visit their loved ones. Please, take, take your step forward right now and actually do something about that. This is the shortest speech I've ever given up here. Thank you and God bless America. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, the other component, the ladies' auxiliary, today is represented by the uh, current president of the unit, Hazel Rodriguez. Hazel? Thank you and welcome on this beautiful day. Memorial Day presents the chance to gather our thoughts, <clears throat> excuse me, and honor the military service of our families and individuals. <clears throat> who either volunteered or were drafted. <coughs> John Doolittle said, American veterans have served their country with the belief that democracy and freedom are ideas to be upheld around the world. In honor of those that we've lost, let's not be passive about the importance of their sacrifice. In their honor, let's pledge to participate in citizenship activities such as the American Legion Auxiliary, which was founded in 1919 and is the world's largest patriotic women's service organization. With a membership of over 850,000 local American auxiliary units have a strong presence in more than 9,500 communities nationwide. The American Legion Auxiliary's mission is to support and to honor the sacrifices of those who have served by enhancing the lives of our veterans, militaries, and their families, both at home and abroad. For God and country, we advocate for veterans educate our citizens, mentor youth, and promote patriotism, good citizenship, peace, and security. One way that the American Legion Auxiliary does this is through our poppy program. That is the little red flowers that you are wearing. Uh, the American Legion Auxiliary adopted this poppy and pledged 100% of the profits from the poppy distributed to the welfare and relief of our servicemen and women and their families thus fulfilling the true meaning of the poppy, an emblem of faith, faith which is being kept al alive with all those who died through service to the living. The American Legion Auxiliary, in order to protect the memorial poppy from the inroads of commercialism, adopted a national poppy program at the St. Paul Convention in 1924, which eliminated the co commercial poppy. The memorial poppies that you're wearing are made of red crepe paper, by hand, by disabled veterans in hospitals, and poppy workmen's work rooms in 40 states, and that the workers receive pay for each poppy made, the materials being furnished by, free by the Department of the State in which the hospital is located. Through the American Legion Auxiliary Poppy Program, more than $300,000 is paid annually to needy and disabled servicemen and service women for making the poppies. The proceeds from the distribution of over 25 million poppies annually under the guidance of the American Legion Auxiliary amount to more than 200,000, every penny of which is donated to Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation work by both the American Legion and the Auxiliary, which includes aid to the needy veterans and their families. The public is given an opportunity each year to help in the significant work of the American Legion and the American Legion Auxiliary, as well as an opportunity to pay tribute to all those who have died in service by wearing a poppy. Uh, Flanders Field is a great explanation of the poppies, and it, there's also a poem that was in response to that by the woman who actually made and de decided that the poppies were going to be distributed. And by meeting the continued needs of our veterans, should we be the concern of every American who values his or her freedom? The auxiliary promotes the poppy as a symbol of the sacrifice our military have made, a symbol to own, open people's hearts and inspire them to donate. On this Memorial Day, pause to reflect on just what has been given and sacrificed so freely so that freedom could ring across the great land. Welcome, and I hope to see everybody at the post to help celebrate this wonderful day, and thank everybody for, for serving. Thank you. <laughs> 